Good afternoon. Welcome to our time of worship today. This thing turned off, didn't it? Just in time. See if it'll. It's on. Let's try this again. Good afternoon. We got it right the second time, didn't we? Good afternoon. Welcome to our worship time today at Cibolo House at Morningside. Join us in our call to worship as we praise the Lord. This is the day that the Lord hath made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Let us rejoice indeed. Our first song, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. Lord, we are stained, we are guilty, we are sinners, and yet your grace and mercy has been extended to us so that we might come to you in the Holy of Holies, into your throne of grace itself. We give you thanks and praise for that, O oh Lord, that you allow us to come to you in prayer, even beckon us, encourage us to lift our voice of praise as well as our prayers of supplication for others. And so, Father, in obedience we come. We offer you our praise and thanksgiving for the mercy you've extended. But Lord, we come on behalf of others. We ask for those in our community, in Morningside, those who are ill, or those who are new and who are still learning their ways around and learning the schedules of the activities and the ins and outs of living in this community. We ask, Father, that you bring them a sense of comfort and peace, but also ask, Lord, that our residents reach out as well as staff to make them feel comfortable to welcome them home. 
Father, we pray for the larger community, for our state, our nation, and for the sake of the world, for peace in those lands that are ravaged by war, in those locations, Lord, that have been victims of the storms of late and the wildfires in the West. We pray for all of these, Lord, that you might bring a sense of comfort in their need. Hear us as we praise you. Be with us now as we worship you, as we offer both our prayers and our praise in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our next song is a medley. There's two songs here, and they both have the same name, Holy Ground. And so we'll sing one, and then the tune will change just a bit, but again, the same idea that we are standing on holy ground. scriptures when we look at places where God is seen or God is heard that God can show up in some very odd places show up in the strangest of circumstances now you and I have seen odd things in our life creation is full of its oddities and its peculiar things but what we're about to hear is a once in a lifetime. God is always showing up in the oddest of places. So he showed up in the garden speaking with Adam and Eve. He showed up in the belly of a fish and spoke to Jonah. He showed up in a cave and spoke to the prophet Elijah. He showed up in a lion's den and spoke with Daniel. He showed up in a fiery furnace with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And believe it or not, God showed up in a courtroom in Charleston, South Carolina during the sentencing of a man named Dylan Roof who shot and killed nine men and women who were attending Bible study at the Emmanuel African Methodist Episcopal Church. God was there in the courtroom. 
through the survivors of the shooting and many of the family members of the murdered parishioners when they announced that they forgave Dylan Roof mm -hmm. for his horrific act. Mm -hmm. God shows up in the strangest of places mm -hmm. and makes unexpected events become unforgettable episodes in the life of those who believe. That's what happened to a man named Moses on a mountain in the Midian wilderness. Listen to what the scriptures say, reading from Exodus chapter 3. Now Moses was tending the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian, and he led the flock to the far side of the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in flames of fire from within a bush. Moses saw that though the bush was on fire, it did not burn up. So Moses thought, I will go over and see this strange sight, why the bush does not burn up. When the Lord saw that he'd gone over to look, God called to him within the bush, Moses, Moses. And Moses said, here I am. Do not come any closer, God said. Take off your sandals. For the place where you are standing is holy ground. And then he said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And at this, Moses hid his face because he was afraid to look at God. The Lord said, I have indeed seen the misery of my people in Egypt. I have heard their crying out because of their slave drivers, and I am concerned about their suffering. So I have come down to rescue them from the hand of the Egyptian and to bring them up out of that land into a land, a spacious land, a land flowing with milk and honey. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. What happened to Moses doesn't happen to many people. Now I've seen brush on fire. I participated in some... Uh, putting out brush fires and pasture fires with the volunteer fire department. But I've never seen anything on fire that wasn't consumed. You know, the natural physical reaction to the element of heat and oxygen and a, and, and a burning item is that it's consumed. It's turned to ash. It dissipates. It goes up in smoke. But this bush remained and so Moses had to go over and take a look. And he sees that the bush that it's burning, and a voice comes from the bush. The scriptures said that he saw an angel, and when he approached the bush, God spoke to Moses. God was there in the desert, not only in the heavens, but present there in the wilderness of Midian. For Moses that day, a mountain becomes a holy place where he stands on holy ground. For Moses, a day at work for a shepherd becomes a sacred moment. Moses had come to the land of Midian at age at about 40 years of age. If you remember, Moses was drawn out of the Nile and raised in the palace of Pharaoh by Pharaoh's own daughter. And at one point saw the suffering of the Hebrew slaves and he struck and killed an Egyptian soldier. And because others found out about it, he fled Egypt and went to live in Midian. So Moses hears from God. That God has heard the cries of the Israelites. That God sees their situation. That he knows their pain. He knows what they're experiencing. They are enslaved. They are in bondage. He knows their need and God intends to come to their aid. God had a plan for Moses. This babe drawn from the Nile, raised as a prince, fled to the desert and now caring for sheep but God reveals he has a plan for this man and he tells Moses that you're going to return to Egypt and speak to Pharaoh 
And do you know what he told Pharaoh? Mm -hmm. Let my people go. That's mm -hmm. right. God was ready to fulfill his purpose mm -hmm. to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob to give them their own land. But more than that, he said, you will be my people and I will be your God. God had a plan for them. A plan of salvation, a plan of freedom, a plan of liberation, a plan for them to leave this land of slavery and abuse, a plan for them to enter a land of plenty, of abundance, a land of promise, a land flowing with milk and honey. Now Moses wasn't the only one for whom God has plans. Through the prophet Jeremiah, we hear these words. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. That can happen for you and me as well. Because God has plans for us. And we can hear his voice. God is here and he knows what's happening in our lives just like he knew what was happening to the Israelites and with Moses. And he longs to speak to you. He longs for you to hear his voice. Listen to these words that come from a book by Max Lucado. It's called A Gentle Thunder. Once there was a man who dared God to speak. Burn the bush like you did for Moses, God, and I will follow. Collapse the wall like you did for Joshua, and I will fight. Still the waves like you did on Galilee, God, and I will listen. And so the man sat by a bush, and he sat near a wall, and he sat close to the sea and waited for God to speak. And God heard the man, so God answered. He sent fire, not for a bush, but for a church. He brought down a wall, not a brick, but of sin. He stilled a storm, not of sea, but of soul. And God waited for the man to respond. And he waited. And he waited. And he waited. But because the man was looking at bushes, not hearts, bricks, and not lives, sea, and not souls, he decided that God had done nothing. So finally, he looked at God and asked, Have you lost your power? And God looked at him and said, Have you lost your hearing? <laughs> Let us pray. Oh Lord, help us to hear. Help us to know you are near. Not in a bush, but in your word and in our hearts. Not in a distant land, but in the hallways of Morningside. Not in the clamor of crowds, but in the joyful singing and songs of your people. The sound of children laughing in hushed voices in prayer, in passionate voices singing songs of praise. Lord, help us hear your voice as we sing our songs of praise to our great and holy God. Amen. 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 Let us sing. How great thou art.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the fellowship of his Holy Spirit be with you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us rejoice. Thank you. Thank you.